Hello and welcome to another uh, Ray Jordan video. Uh, on today's video, uh, I decided to talk about the uh, legal self-defense uh, protection uh, options for all those uh, people who are who, who do have uh, CCW permits, who do carry uh, weapons on their person or in their cars or uh, in their purses or uh, you know just a keep gun for safety for home defense uh, at their home so the reason why i wanted to make uh you know create this video is is, is to kind of you know review the options uh and then uh, just kind of go through what kind of protection that we think we have with those app with those programs the uh, legal insurance i also call them and how effective <coughs> how realistically uh effective those programs are so I want to start basically with what I have. Um, I do use uh, U.S. Law Shield, and actually, let me just uh, grab my uh, membership uh, membership card. So here is my uh, U.S. Law Shield membership, and I've been wondering and I've been researching for a while. <clears throat> I keep, you know, uh, trying to kind of educate myself as far as you know what the options are and comparing with all the other uh, uh, self-protection, self-defense, uh, legal protection programs in the industry, uh, such as US uh, CCA, such as CCW SAFE, and uh, several other options, and uh, trying to kind of compare and uh, come up with some kind of a realistic uh, comparison system to see where I'm kind of standing as far as the effective uh, protection program. Obviously, uh, having a CCW permit, I not every day, but you know, a lot of times I carry my uh, concealed carry gun on me, on my person, sometimes in my car, obviously always at home, and uh, always you know, consider those options, as, you know, running those scenarios in my mind uh, for, in general, self-awareness. I'm always trying to be in the in this self-awareness zone and not trying to kind of lose sight out of that zone so uh, in this sense I again like I said I started analyzing and comparing all these options and what I realize is is and I want to share some screens also uh, with you uh, as I'm uh, going through these and uh, I want to basically bring on the screen uh, all those options and kind of give comparisons and then eventually share my thoughts and, and, and kind of you know uh, kind of share with you all and I'd like to be you know seeing some commentary basically after this video if you watch it you know uh, put your comments and you know, see what your what your thoughts are and see uh, and kind of just, just share share opinions and thoughts so uh, I want to basically you know change my screen so I can go ahead and uh, uh, share those screens with you. Just a quick second. There you go. Now, first off, what you're seeing here on this screen, there are seven different options. Armed Citizens LDN, or in long, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network, CCW Safe, Right to Bear, Firearms Legal Protection, you'll, you can find this as FLP, U.S. CCA, U.S. Law Shield, the one that I'm using, and Second Call Defense. And you can compare each of these uh, against the rest of them. Looking at cost, um, bail bond assistance, uh, choosing your attorney, insurance, criminal defense attorney fees, civil defense attorney fees, civil damages, recruitment clause, appeals covered, any legal weapon coverage, expert witness coverage, uh, red, flag, red flag law coverage, 50 state coverage, ongoing training and content, nationwide availability, uh, emergency hotline, uh, spouse and family coverage, payout upfront or reimbursement, post incident firearm confiscation, uh, lower cost plans availability, uh, uh, ongoing attorney access, compensation while in court, psychological support, personal hardship coverage, and funeral expense reimbursement. As you see, <coughs> apologize, I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
as you see, there is a lot of uh, items in this matrix. Uh, I call this a kind of a metric type, metric based analysis that analyzes, that compares all these options for each of these companies, or each of these seven companies. And if, if, in fact, you know, if you want to see obviously more detailed information, you can click for each of them. And you know, more or less, every one of them has okay this one, but not the other one. Uh, the other one, you go okay. USCCA has, for instance. Hundred thousand dollar bail bond assistance, whereas U.S. Law Shield has, it says various by state, or one of them, for instance, you know, like CCW Safe has, uh, has. Um, I just want to pick one. Um, cost is hundred five dollars uh, per year. Is for instance this armed citizen LDN versus. $499 per year is USCCA. There's a quite a bit of a cost differential. And you might, of course, wonder what this cost differential, uh, what are the things if you wanna if you wanna compare, for instance, if you say, hey, this is the cheapest one, this is the most expensive one. So let's see. <clears throat> and then you, you notice that in you know, many things that armed citizens uh, do not cover. For instance, just look at this one here, uh, civil damages. Uh, Armed citizen has no coverage for civil damages, whereas a USCCA says up to two million dollars coverage. On the other hand, U.S. Law Shield says no coverage at all for civil civil damages. Or let's like, just kind of look at this a little more. Um, the compensation while in court that makes a difference. You know, while if you're in a court, if you if you were involved in a uh, self-defense situation with a firearm incident then uh, you'll be going through court and uh, during the court and however long it takes um, it says $750 a day compensation whereas uh, as, as you see mine uh, which is uh, US Law Shield is not given any coverage so these are the options that you can uh, compare and in fact you know after the video I'm gonna go ahead and put the link that I'm using right now to, sh to, to share with you but just just for now, <clears throat> for the sake of you know argument or discussion, and I'm gonna go with this, and I will definitely you can find this, uh, you know, at the in the comment section, the link out to this uh, website. So okay, nice. So you can you can compare them like this, right? And obviously you, know, you can click on each of these and read all their uh, policies and coverage options and exclusions. And that is now the keyword that I'm gonna talk about exclusions. So. Every single one of them have exclusions, and I mean when I say exclusions, they're not a uh, few exclusions, they have lots of exclusions. So what that means in an insurance parlay, right, you know, when you do come up with, you got an insurance plan, you're making premium payments each month, and then you're involved with uh, self-defense, justifiable usage, use of a uh, firearm. And you're a victim of a crime. You use you have to restore. You have to you know use your uh, your weapon to protect yourself, your life, or your loved ones, your family's life, lives. So uh, in this case, obviously, needless to say, no matter what, you're gonna call 911. As every single one of them says, first thing is call 911. Wait for the uh, uh, police uh, come to the scene, and then you'll be. Uh, you'll be actually arrested and that is not a problem first because this is the normal procedure and then uh, eventually you'll be subject to uh, court court appearance you have to go through the court right so now uh, that's where it's it's supposed to be kicking in right what they're saying is is as we all know if we are involved with any kind of a self-defense incident using our guns the legal process can be extremely ha uh, hairy and tricky and ugly. And the legal fees altogether, all the attorney fees, court fees, all the other uh, relevant you know, fees might come up to, depending on the situation, $100,000, even $200,000, even $300,000. That would basically, you know, that's their selling point, right? You know, basically you know, take up all our savings, lifetime savings and everything. Maybe, you know, we have to use uh, 
or you know kids college fund maybe sell the house you know use all your 401k plan and still you know maybe borrow money all these things super ugly even if you know become clean at the end of the process we are clean and we get to go home scot-free nice but you're still out of maybe three hundred thousand dollars or maybe you're in debt for a couple hundred thousand dollars as if you bought a new house you got a new mortgage so that's financially uh, devastating that can be a financially devastating process that's why we're all you know buying some kind of a legal protection so when we do look at each of these they have one no regardless of these uh, comparisons now I want to say regardless of these comparisons they have one common factor that's a one a common denominator across all these seven options each one of these are insurance company based that means for instance US Law Shield is not a law firm or US CCA is not a law firm these are plans these are insurance plans that are working with law firms and attorneys in their respective states and then uh, offering your coverage some of them you can get to choose your own attorney such as in US CCA but U.S. Law Shield doesn't even allow that. They assign you an attorney. You got to work with the attorney. If you don't like him, if you don't like your attorney, him or her, or if you don't think it's going to work for you, you don't get to change an attorney. You're stuck with that attorney. Now, one thing I want to tell you. In insurance business, in general, just think about the insurance business. Car insurance, health insurance, um, homeowner's insurance, you name it. Any type of insurance. Uh, in the financial world, for instance, you know, payment protection insurance, credit insurance, all those. What do insurance companies look for? Just like any other company, to maximize their profit, profits, to minimize their expenses. In this case, to minimize their claims. The claims will be made, but they will do their best to reject and decline that's why they have ton of exclusions that's how they write their policies to be able to come up with a uh, highest likelihood to decline or reject coverage uh, to you and even if for instance this is the ugly part of it even if let's say after you're involved with a firearm incident you're a victim of a crime and then you're in the court now and then you get it uh, you didn't get acquitted you are found guilty. If you are found guilty, you got to make sure that your coverage doesn't ask you for reimbursement because so many of these are actually asking that in case you're found guilty, whatever payments they made up until that point, they're going to ask for that money back. That's what it is. And that's pretty ugly. And if you read their exclusions, and I can't, I'm not going to go into this kind of detail because it, it takes quite a bit those exclusions but one of them I want to give you one or a couple of them one is if you're not involved with criminal act that is extremely uh, vague and large huge statement example when you use your firearm even though 100% justifiable act to protect your own life or your family's life you can easily be found as criminal if you happen to use your gun in a gun-free zone you're involved, you're a criminal. And you might be declined coverage. You might be rejected. So there are lots of exclusions like this using that legal lingo, which is vague and open to kind of interpretation of that law. That's where that's where the attorneys are coming in and doing their best performance to use that vagueness either for your advantage or against you against you so what did I say the, the common denominator among all these seven options that you're looking at now or like these all these companies is one thing all insurance base so what they're doing is this as a typical insurance company they're applying all these ex exclusions they're doing all the applying all the tricks 
to maximize their growth, to maximize their profits, right? Then, okay, I understand you're going to say, and you're going to say, obviously, just like I'm saying, I'm paying, currently I'm paying $16 approximately uh, a month uh, for U.S. Law Shield. That includes the bail bond and uh, expert witness coverage. When I say bail bond, if the bail bond is put, for instance, $100,000, they don't pay the whole thing. I mean, they pay only maybe $5,000 of it. That's what it is. I mean, it's not the full 100% coverage. But yeah, let's call it bail bond coverage or witness expert. So, okay, I'm saying I'm paying $16. My friend is, my buddy is paying, maybe he has USCCA and he's, I think he's paying $35, $40. And they have several different plans, right? And gold option, platinum option, all these. And let's say he has the highest one, maybe kind of translating into about $500 plus a year. But still, you know, these exclusions apply. And I was, I was researching more into this to kind of understand, okay, what else is available in the marketplace? Because all these options are all limited with those exclusions. And then he's making me think, hey, I'm thinking I'm covered. I'm thinking I got some coverage. But what if the day comes and I use my weapon and I end up in the court and then either, you know, reject it flat out before even we start the process, like no coverage to you, sir, I'm sorry. Or the coverage starts for this and for that, attorney fees, uh, the, the criminal court, all right, nice. I pass the criminal court. Oops, the civil court is there. That I, You know, they, they open, they, you know, they're suing me in the civil court, and I'm not covered there. Or the worst is I'm found guilty. In my action, I'm thinking I'm 100% justifiable and I can be found guilty. That is possible. That's a legal possibility and they might ask me for reimbursement. Can you imagine the, the you know, what kind of, you know, situation that would be? I mean, you're found guilty, you're going to go to jail and plus they're asking you, hey, pay, pay, us, pay us back the $100,000 we paid so far for you, to support you. In this process, I found another option. That is attorneys in, uh, in retainer, or attorney, I'm sorry, attorneys on retainer. As you see, you know, you're not gonna find it here. That's not one of these options. Attorneys on retainer is not one of these options. Why? Because all these, like I said, are insurance type programs with varying uh, levels of coverage, depending on, you know, uh, which one you're talking about. But when you look at the attorneys on retainer, this is a law firm. I mean, actual law firm, specialized and with years expertise in criminal cases. They're not insurance company. They're not like an insurance company working with law firms or attorneys, they are themselves a law firm. And they are offering self-defense coverage, legal coverage. So because of this fundamental difference, the fact that they are not insurance company but they are a law firm, you work directly with the attorneys from that law firm. And when you're working with them, I just want to kind of show you here uh, the benefits of attorneys on retainer. The typical benefits that you're going to say, hey, I have these two with mine, such as toll-free emergency line available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, availability in all 50 states, and additional coverage for bail bonds, expert witness, investigator fees, and more. But what is more? Let's go ahead and compare these, the, the coverage that they're given, they're offering with the others. And on this table, you're going to find AOR, in short, attorneys on retainer, uh, compared to the biggest players in the market. The biggest player in the market is USCCA. With that, and also CCW Safe, US Law Shield, and FLP. You remember the one I said, Firearms uh, Legal protection, protection? That's what it is. So the biggest, these are the biggest players in the market. And when you do compare them, you compare for each of these terms, 
and I will slowly go down to just kind of look at them. <coughs> Excuse me. Available in all 50 states? Yes. Others are not. They're not all available in every state. Or, like in my case, um, I'm paying extra for additional state coverage. Uh, does not use contracted attorneys. Checks. The others, all they're all using the contracted attorneys because they're not law firms. They're insurance companies, so they have to contract with law firms. Know your law firm in advance. You can know that, not these. You're not going to know because you don't know what law uh, firm they're going to work with, what, 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 which attorney they're going to assign to you, to your case. Covers criminal acts. They don't cover criminal acts. The fact that AOR is covering criminal acts because that's what their specialty is. That's what their customers, who their customers are. They are specialized in criminal law. Covers use of illegal weapons. Others don't. And again, that's another big, huge exclusion. Use of illegal weapons. For a weapon to be considered illegal, believe me, there can be a lot of tiny, tiny little modifications made to, for instance, uh, to, to a pistol or to a rifle, to a shotgun, that can be considered easily illegal. Then you don't have a coverage under these plans. Covers gun-free zones. Look at this one. There is only one of them covering gun-free zones. That's CCW safe. All these, I mean, schools, uh, government buildings, courts, uh, court buildings. Those, those are all gun-free zones, right? Covers invalid or expired CCW permit. It they do cover, not the others. Covers prohibited possessor status. That means uh, if you're, for some reason, you're not allowed to have a weapon. But you had to use a weapon to defend yourself. They cover that. Covers impaired judgment by drugs or alcohol. This is absolute no-no for the, uh, for except, you know, uh, depends again, I'm sorry. And it depends on the case. These three, USCCA, uh, CCW safe, and uh, U.S. Law Shield are covering, FLP is not. Um, covers negligent discharge. Two of them are covering, the other two are not covering. Covers domestic violence. U.S. Law Shield and U.S. CCA are not covering domestic violence. Has free, has free equipment provisions. That They don't have any equipment provi provisions, meaning if you did not get acquitted, they're not going to ask you for reimbursement. But this one and USCCA, what was the one? That one, the USCCA, yeah, USCCA and FLP. Uh, they will ask for for uh, recruitment provisions. Bail bond coverage. Okay, they all have bail bond coverage. I just mentioned that anyway. So I'm continuing. Expert witness coverage, same. All are doing that. Investigator coverage, all are doing that except mine, uh, U.S. Law Shield. Uh, retrial coverage, they all, they all have retrial coverage. Criminal and civil defense coverage, they all do have that. Scene cleanup coverage, except U.S. Law Shield, they all have that. Covers mental health services, except two of these. But one of them is U.S. Law Shield, the other one is um, a CCW, they cover. Reimbursement of firearm. If confiscated, uh, they all cover except U.S. Law Shield. On-duty security coverage. That is only other than IOR. Only uh, U.S. Law Shield is covering that. That's interesting. Covers all additional uh, court costs. And what are those? Like polygraph examinations, DNA examinations, and other scientific tests, court costs, and all official fees, court uh, reporters, Fees related to discovery and departmental reports, medical records, transcripts, process service, messenger services, appraisers, escrow agents, accountants, electronic research, photocopies, and postage, and any other expenses which in the judgment of the attorney are necessary to your representation. So they do cover. USCCA do not cover. I'm sorry, FLP do does not cover. 
and also U.S. Law Shield does not cover. Covers victim advocate representation. Only AOR does that, none of the others. And also discounted legal services for non-self-defense, criminal, and civil matters. None of them, none of the others uh, offer coverage. So as you see, guys, there are a lot of things to look for when it comes to finding the good coverage. A lot of things. And this is how attorneys on retainer are faring and compared to the other major players in the industry. And now that's making me think, and if you especially uh, go to their website, which is this, go to their website, and then if you look at the frequently asked questions, and if you watch a few videos, obviously I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to have sufficient time, otherwise it can go, you know, forever. If you watch those videos on this site, you understand how those uh, exclusions work against you, right? By definition, the insurance company is when they write their policies, the underwriters write their policies, right? When they do write their policies, they're coming up with those exclusions, all those legal exclusions by their legal team to be able to cover themselves, right? To deny you coverage. And these comparisons that I was uh, sharing with you are actually very general. I mean, each of these are very important, right? Every single one of them. I mean, just mention just one of them here. What was that? Uh, it wasn't this one. It was on the other one. Showing like, you know, the coverage or payments, daily payments while you were in the court. That makes a lot of difference because while you're waiting in the court, you're not allowed to work. You know, maybe it's going to be a month, maybe two months. And let's say, you know, you got a big, I mean, you got big mortgage payments, you got kids, you got family, you got to, you know, you got to earn money and you don't have any income. Some of them are providing that kind of coverage, some don't. Even if those, the ones that are offering you co uh, coverage, if you don't get acquitted, then they're going to ask you, some of them may ask you for reimbursement or they might be coming with certain caps things like that so each of these in fact you know when you that's why I've been reading this you know studying this you know uh, working on this a while because it is not a simple comparison as you just saw I'm gonna go back to the one I was showing you these seven options the ones that you know I was four of them actually I was using like the major ones USCCA, Law Shield, uh, CCW, NFLP those are the ones that I was comparing against attorneys on retainer and then you can see how many different items that you have to read after you purchase or prior to purchasing if you don't have it or if you have it now I would strongly recommend to read in fine print to read their basic contract let's say US law sheet or you have USCCA read what USCCA says so uh, to understand what is it that they're covering and what are their exclusions all this lengthy boring you know legal terminology it's not easy to read it's ugly I know but you know to understand what you have <coughs> you have to read those but just to kind of you know that's why I'm sharing that's why I want to put this video I believe if you you know if you sit down and if you spend hours read carefully for instance what USCCA says about the coverage you're gonna come out and you're gonna be convinced that they have a lot of exclusions and you can actually find some real cases on YouTube I think one was Miley I can't remember that lady's last name Miley Gale uh, don't take my word uh, there is a case on YouTube available the lady who was in self-defense uh, situation in her uh, home I think and her problem with USCCA as far as the coverage so you'd be surprised you'd be you'd be thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm the I'm in the same way I mean I've been using this I've been using my uh, membership now I think close to two years now I mean thank God you know I don't have to I haven't been involved with any kind of you know self-defense situation that I have to use my gun but again what is it 
best time to learn about what kind of coverage you have. When that happens, and then you learn it under duress or before. So each of these, believe me, well, don't take my word again. You just, you know, read your the, the, their coverage. Click here. I'm going to put this link and read their coverage, understand their coverage and exclusions. Obviously, this is business, and they're going to start advertising. That they're going to they're offering this and this and this and that. Fine, none of them are lies. They're correct. They're right. But look at their exclusions. And then go back to this. AOR. Attorney is on retainer. And the primary difference that I found, the fundamental difference is between the others, like I said, this is a law firm. Therefore, they're not restricted by what the insurance company's concerns are. Insurance company's concerns are obviously to improve their bottom line. This is, after all, a business. To improve their bottom line. And that's why they're coming up with those exclusions and then writing their contracts with the law firms and attorneys they're working with. That's why, you know, they have ton of exclusions. Whereas this is a law firm, not an insurance company. And you're working directly with a law firm specialized in the criminal cases. And, and uh, you are using their expertise. The only condition that they have is obviously, needless to say, your case must be happening after you become a member with AOR. AOR and you have to have reasonably justifiable uh, self-defense situation. You got to be involved with a reasonably self-defense situation. Needless to say, I'm going to kind of, you know, be a little extreme. I mean, if somebody uh, decides to get this membership and goes to bank and, and at a gunpoint tries to rob the bank, obviously there is no cover, no one, no one can ever cover that person. But again, you are... 100% you believe 100% justifiable self-defense act such as you you got to you know somebody you know some people some guys broke into your house you had to use your gun they had guns and you, that's a 100% justifiable situation but as you well know in the legal system <coughs> excuse me in the court system depending on what the jury is and the jury's political inclinations are, as far as you know, the you know the tendencies about the Second Amendment rights, you know, in the U.S. Constitution about the the gun rights and all those. And if they are, let's say, strongly leaning towards left gun control side, and and the attorney or uh, prosecutor is also on there, kind of on that side, and building the case to put you in a hole, even though it's near 100% perfectly justifiable case can put you in jail because of the technicalities in the legal system. As, again, I'm going to have to repeat this. It's one thing that you're right or you're innocent in reality, but when it comes to court system, it's a matter of proving that. If if your attorney is weak, if the prosecutor is strong and working again, working towards the end that I just described, even though you're 100% innocent, you might end up in jail. And that's where my, uh, attorneys on retainer, that's where their strength is. That's why they're called also, you can find them, I want to go back to the top of this uh, site here, page. They're actually called Attorneys for Freedom. This is a law firm's name. And uh, I'm still looking at the, the uh, Attorneys um, AOR pages uh, for AOR specifics. But you can find this. I'm going to actually just go to the other website. Uh, Attorneys for Freedom law firm and I just want to bring this up yeah 
in Arizona. They're in Arizona. I should be able to pull this way. There you go. This one here. Attorneys for law firm. I don't want to meet the team. Okay. There's the one. There you go. Attorneys for Freedom is this is their actual homepage, and uh, they are located in Chandler, Arizona, and they offer plans. They're, they have two tiers of plans. One is for only state of Arizona. The other one is any other state. And there, uh, you can you can find their plans, uh, affordable, quite quite you know, uh, decent payments. You got an individual option. You got a family option. Uh, they're about you know, let's say if you're in Arizona, twenty five dollars a month per person. If it's an individual plan, if you're uh, if you're outside of Arizona, any other state, at thirty five dollars a month uh, a month. You can buy obviously annual. You can kind of save about uh, you know sixty some dollars. If you buy it annually, you can also you have an option to buy for family, and obviously you add another ten fifteen dollars per month. So that is that company, and from this homepage you can click on this red button, attorneys on retainer, and then you can go into that page uh, that I was actually showing you. So you can find here a bunch of like I said, you know, a bunch of videos uh, to to learn about uh, to learn about them. So again. Going back to, going back to this initial page I was sharing with you, and when you when you analyze, and again it takes hours actually, it takes hours if you want to do a comprehensive analysis, comprehensive study, meaning one by one analyze and compare the other one, right? Because those are the ones available in the industry. For instance, you know this one here, Armed Citizen LDN, the Legal Defense Network. Uh, that is pretty, pretty limited, extremely limited coverage because actually they're themselves not insurance company. They are more like a kind of a, uh, a group of people, kind of so to speak. I'm trying to resemble, uh, trying to kind of describe it. Came together and created a pool to help each other, to help friends, kind of almost. And their resources are very limited because of that. Obviously, uh, you can't expect a lot of coverage. Whereas, you know, U.S. Law Shield, in my case, in my company, they say, we offer unlimited coverage, they say. We offer you unlimited coverage. Okay, nice. Unlimited coverage meaning, you know, million dollars, what is it? You know, two, three million, what is it? But then, here comes the exclusions. Or USCCA, well, they are the ones, the major player, you can find them all over the internet, all the time, USCCA this, USCCA that, wonderful. And but, oh, I'm sorry. One, one other thing I was gonna say about that: they offer a ton of training. Yes, they do. Their training programs are wonderful. The videos they actually offer firearm training, various different levels of it. They have lots of material on their website, the training materials. But I tell you what, the day comes that I had to resort using my firearm to defend myself or my family. What do I need? Training videos or actual effective defensive uh, strategy that they can come up with to represent me in the court system so to keep me out of jail and plus, obviously, the nature of this insurance covered my expenses. And at the end, if I found guilty, not to ask for reimbursement. Unfortunately, even, though, even if they say no limit, sky is the limit, these are the exclusions. So, what do I do? So, going back to uh, uh, again, full screen, this is what I wanted to share with you. Because, again, what are the chances? You know, a lot of people might say, okay, what are the chances that I'm, be, I'll be, I'm gonna be involved with, is, with a situation that I have to resort to using my gun? That's this is the typical question that insurance companies, when they write their insurance policies, they use the underwriters write those policies, but underwriters themselves do not calculate the risks. The risks are calculated by actuaries, 
the actuary is actually coming from the life actuaries. Those are the guys actually writing the life insurance plans, but the same principles, the same methodologies are utilized by any other you know insurance company in any other lines of insurance. For instance, in this case, self-protection legal defense. What are the uh, chances of a person being involved, right, with, uh, uh, with an insurance situation like this? There are lots of factors if you're living in a bad neighborhood versus living in a decent neighborhood. I mean, I never had to so far, in, you know, uh, in, in this, I never been in a situation to use my gun. And of course, the, the, <laughs> the logic says, hopefully it's going to be like this. This is a human tendency. But wait a minute. Who can guarantee? Who can guarantee that it will never happen? What does the, you know, financial companies, investment companies always say? Past performance is never an indication of future performance. They come out and say they proudly share their performance for the past five years and ten years or last year quarter by quarter we got returns we made incredible returns for our clients investment companies financial investment companies but they never say if you invest with us we're gonna guarantee amazing returns next year and next five years that all depends on many thousand many 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 things right Market conditions, this and that, whatever, global conditions. <laughs> Same thing. You are, okay, you can say, i never been involved in it. You know, any situation I had to use a gun, I didn't even think about it, never occurred to me even. Does that mean it will never happen to you? There are, according to police statistics, according to court records, every single year in this country, in the United States, anywhere between 300, that's a huge range, Anywhere between 300,000 to 2 million times people had to resort using their guns. That doesn't mean they, they pulled their guns and they fired and killed somebody. No. But they had to resort some sort of gun usage. Either they brandished them, they had to draw it, they had to point at somebody, maybe they had to fire, discharge it. They had to use their guns to protect themselves and their families. And they estimate with that, a lot of lives are saved. But as you know, even if you brandish your gun, depending on your context and situation, that is subject to legal process. And you that is going to put you through that process that you have to go through the court. And now when you go through the court, you'll be, you don't know what kind of uh, path that legal case, the litigation will take place. You don't know what kind of expenses that you're going to incur. Therefore, the legal protection, what do you call it? CCW protection. CCW, you know, I, or, or uh, some kind of a self-defense. Firearm protection. Or actually, self-defense doesn't have to only involve with firearms. You can maybe use any other object. That's why AOR is saying any type of weapon. That could be not only a gun, it could be a knife. It could be a blunt object, it could be a tire rod, it could be a baton, it could be your fists. Anything that you use to defend yourself, you're subject to, you know, uh, court system. You might end up in, you will end up in the court, especially if you use your gun, you're supposed to, you're legally responsible, Colin, making that 911 call. You are legally responsible. If you don't do this, you know, that I have to tell you that, that you're criminal. So then, Okay, you got to go through this process. Who can guarantee you you're not going to be involved in that situation? If something happens, if you're attacked, if the, if the bad guys, the bad boys get in your house and they have guns, and the only way you can protect yourself is a gun at that very moment, think, think hard, at that very moment, that gun is going to make a difference between death and life. Your wife's, your children's, your, and yours. At that moment, you're not going to think all these legal consequences and calculate and optimize all these possible scenarios in your mind and then come up with a conclusion, hmm, should I react or not? That's a split-second decision. That's only a split-second decision which will change things drastically. So... One, be ready, meaning be armed, 
absolutely be armed and absolutely be well trained with that firearm. Technical aspects of it, shooting aspects of it, and also get yourself educated about the legal aspects of it and have a self-defense protection. With that, <clears throat> I found attorneys on retainer as the best and only option in compared to all the rest of those seven companies and four of my major players in the industry, best option ever. And I will definitely ditch this US law shield. I'm gonna go ahead and ditch this, cancel this, and I'm gonna start with attorneys on retainer or the law firm um, attorneys for freedom in Chandler, Arizona. I'm gonna start with them and ditch this card because I think this is a joke. I think so so far two years I've been paying for nothing. I'm not even sure what kind of you know the coverage that they have is full of exclusions that I know they're gonna trip me in the process. So anyway, thanks for uh, listening, uh, and watching my video, and listening to me, and uh, stay safe, stay prepared, peace.